Hello everyone. Today I'm going to break down my systemization of knowledge paper, Hitchhiker's Guide to Secure Checkpointing on Energy Harvesting Systems. This work was done by me as part of my PhD under the guidance of Dr. Matthew Hicks. So let's quickly begin. Before I begin, I will give a very brief overview of intermittent computation since most of you must already be familiar with it by now. Energy harvesting devices are subject to frequent unexpected power cycles. Intermittent computation enables forward progress of long running applications by bridging short bouts of computation with checkpoints. In this figure, you can see the difference in the trajectory of application progress in normal computation as opposed to an intermittent execution scenario. Intermittent computation takes more execution time as it checkpoints intermediate application state to some non-volatile memory before power loss and restores the checkpointed state on power up. The size and frequency of checkpoints may vary from very frequent checkpoints in systems that use non-volatile majority gates, that is NVMGs, to continuous checkpointing in systems with persistent main memory to just in time checkpointing solutions in mixed volatility systems. So, why do we care about security in checkpointing techniques? By 2025, Internet of Things devices are going to generate 79 zettabytes of data. This data finds its use in all walks of life, making security of IoT devices critical. The non-volatile nature of checkpoints in intermittent computation makes these devices vulnerable to unusual security threats. Additionally, researchers must also take account of resource-constrained environments in which energy harvesting devices operate while designing their defenses. All these challenges make the problem of secure checkpointing unique and interesting. So let's lay down the agenda for this paper breakdown. What is the motivation of this survey work? Prior works either survey checkpoint techniques in general without any consideration of their security, or they consider the security of energy harvesting networks at large, but not the security of checkpointing techniques in particular. This paper provides a survey dedicated specifically to secure checkpointing techniques. So let's understand the roadmap for this presentation. First, we will understand the attacker's capabilities. Then we will discuss the threats posed to secure checkpointing techniques. Then we will discuss the inspected existing defenses based on the threats as discussed in the paper. Next, we will qualitatively compare the performance of each defense as discussed in the paper. And finally, we will see what threat specific defenses and improvements are recommended by the paper. Avenues of attack. First, let's understand the attacker. Attacks can be broadly classified into two categories based on the level of access to the attacker. First is a software level attacker. A software level attacker has the following capabilities. Time multiplex software, uh, which runs on the device at a different time than the victim application. Time multiplex software has ungoverned access to system resources like the non-volatile memory. A software level attacker has the ability to load time multiplex software. They also have the ability to load wetted co-resident software as well as unwetted co-resident software. So what does it mean? Wetted co-resident software are modules that are loaded on the device through the defensive channels. Unwetted co-resident software, on the other hand, are modules which are loaded on the device surreptitiously, that is through a buffer overflow as part of a code injection or code reuse attack. 
co-resident software have access to both data in non-volatile and volatile memory and is potential able to interpose on the victim application. The next type of attacker is the hardware level attacker. A hardware level attacker can hook probes to the PCB traces to monitor communication between the microcontroller and external memory chips. This precludes defensive approaches relying on external memory for plain text checkpoint storage. Such an attacker has the ability to connect a debugger to the victim system or leverage direct memory access to access the victim's memory. Additionally, a hardware level attacker can also extract the exact duration of victim application execution by modulating the energy available to the victim device. They leverage their control of the victim's power to induce faults into its execution. So what are the attacker's goals? First is exfiltration, which means directly accessing or making sense of the checkpoints. This is countered by incorporating confidentiality into the defense. Next is modification, wherein an attacker may tamper with the checkpoint to inject faults or even escalate privileges. This is countered by verifying if the correct state is loaded on the device, as such incorporating integrity of checkpoints. Next, we have counterfeiting, wherein the attacker may load checkpoints that the device did not create. This is valuable if the attacker wants to tick the device into using the wrong key. This is overcome by validating the identity of checkpoints, namely the property of authentication. Next, we have the replay attacks, wherein an attacker with read and write access can make copies of the checkpoints and reload those checkpoints to replay the program from an attacker controlled point. This can be countered by using the property of freshness, where we make sure that always state is restored from the latest checkpoints. Next, we have denial of service attacks, where an attacker with power control of the device can induce power cycles in the middle of the checkpointing process to corrupt the checkpointed state itself. This is countered by making sure that we have multiple copies of checkpoints stored in the device. As such, we restore the checkpoint only from a valid copy. This is known as availability. Now let's talk about the crux of the paper, which surveys the different checkpointing security types. The paper observes that secure checkpointing techniques fall under one of the two categories depending on how the checkpoints are isolated. Cryptographic isolation that use some form of encryption and hashing for providing confidentiality, integrity and authentication. Memory isolation techniques on the other hand use some form of program counter based access control to isolate the memory containing sensitive code and data. So let's talk about the papers or the works that this survey paper tries to analyze. Under cryptographic isolation comes optimal checkpointing. Optimal checkpointing uses a Prince block cipher to encrypt checkpoints and provide confidentiality. SECCS, on the other hand, generates physically unclonable function-derived session keys. It uses a stream cipher for confidentiality and hash-based message authentication code for integrity and authentication. The paper observes that SSE, Secure Application Continuity, leverages message authentication code tags uh, 
and a nonce for freshness and double buffering in checkpoints for availability. SICP and optimized SICP extends SAC to include confidentiality by using authenticated encryption with associated data. Next, we talk about memory isolation. Memory isolation techniques use some form of program counter based access control mechanism. SIA relies on memory protection unit features available on mid range microcontrollers. MPI, on the other hand, fabricates a custom software hypervisor. State of the art works also use ARM Trust Zone for providing security. Now, we will talk about the security analysis part of the paper. This table shows the results of the qualitative comparative study done in the paper. What they found in their qualitative analysis is that the Prince block cipher is susceptible to cryptanalysis attacks. Optimal checkpointing does not mention the key storage facility for the Prince cipher. An adversary can brute force the key from the device image or use automated tools to uncover obfuscated keys. SECCS circumvents the key storage problem by using puff based that is physically unclonable function based challenges to generate keys. SSC, SICP and optimized SICP propose storing the secret key and the nonce counter in an isolated memory region. However, it is more important to note that cryptographic isolation does not protect the active state of the device, including the checkpoint generation and restoration APIs. As such, they are susceptible to software level attacks. Also, the possibility of using direct memory access and interrupts further weakens the security of such schemes. Memory isolation techniques, on the other hand, do consider software level attacks in their threat models, but have some pitfalls. Secure intermittent architectures memory protection unit can be bypassed by using control flow hijacking or escalating the privileges to access the isolated memory. MPI on the other hand relies on a software based hypervisor to maintain its memory access controls. So it only provides logic domain separation and is susceptible to unwetted co-resident software attacks. ARM Trust Zone is a reliable physical isolation based secure checkpointing solution. However, off the shelf Trust Zone M devices do not come with persistent RAM technologies like FRAM, which offers better physical security when it comes to electronic or radiation tampering compared to flash. Next, we will talk about the performance analysis part of the paper. Optimal checkpointing, as the authors found, consumes considerable non-volatile memory for storing its online queue learning table, increasing its memory footprint. SECCS, on the other hand, requires a lot of additional hardware support, which makes its area overhead very high, equivalent to approximately 28,000 gates. You should note that the maximum gate count on the ARM Cortex-M0 is 25,000. So this might not be possible to implement on a real lightweight microcontroller. Consequently, it incurs a significant energy cost. SAC, SICP and optimized SICP entail the highest time and energy overheads of all secure checkpointing techniques as they incorporate an elaborate software based or hardware accelerated double buffering checkpoint approach which involves the generation of authentication tags as well as encryption or decryption of checkpoint state for every checkpoint generation or restoration call. Memory isolation techniques offer much better performance on the other hand 
as they do not require encryption or decryption of checkpoints, save for MPI as it relies on a software-based hypervisor. Even though MPI's overhead of checkpointing is very low, it entails a significant overall overhead due to its computationally heavy hypervisor calls in the case of applications with a high number of dynamic jumps and no optimization enabled. So, what are the key takeaways of this paper? First, is that cipher-based isolation techniques do not protect the active state of the device. A proper key storage facility plays an important role in the security of cipher-based techniques, which is currently a concern with the state-of-the-art solutions. Lightweight authenticated encryption schemes are required for ensuring forward progress in resource constrained devices. The final observation is that cipher based techniques need a deployable solution to provide freshness. When it comes to PC based isolation techniques, they range superior to their cipher based counterparts in terms of security and performance. However, the current PC-based isolation techniques suited to energy harvesting targets are insecure against short and long-term data remnants attacks. Currently, ARM Trust Zone is the best security solution for PC-based isolation. However, even the lightest variant of ARM Trust Zone is too complex in terms of hardware for the resource-constrained microcontrollers these checkpointing techniques run on. Finally, there is also a need to consider availability in the current program counter-based isolation schemes. So, what are our recommendations with this paper? The only option to secure checkpoints in energy harvesting devices lacking PC-based memory access control is cryptographic-based isolation. Cryptographic based isolation techniques require a facility for on chip key storage. This facility needs to be on chip because any off chip key storage mechanism is susceptible to bus snooping attacks. One way to circumvent this is using a fuzzy extractor to generate keys using on chip randomness. The paper advocates using a single puff derived key which is readable across power cycles. When PC-based memory access control is supported by the hardware, memory isolation-based checkpointing techniques are preferable due to increased security and performance. The paper advocates using a lightweight, trusted execution environment suitable for resource-constrained energy harvesting devices with an FRAM, that is ferroelectric RAM, non-volatile memory, as FRAM is better in terms of security and checkpointing performance. Texas Instruments MSP430, as shown in the figure, is a very popular choice for ultra-low power energy harvesting scenarios owing to its FRAM main non-volatile memory, which makes taking checkpoints more feasible. As such, the paper recommends MSP430's trusted execution environment IP encapsulation as a lightweight program counter-based isolation alternative. Understanding defensive applicability and effectiveness is hindered by disparate threat models, disparate protection, and disparate levels of hardware support. Most threat models do not consider physical access common to real-world IoT deployments. This work strives to act as a guide to any vendor looking to incorporate secure checkpointing techniques in their energy harvesting devices. Thanks for tuning in. These are some references in case anyone wants to go over them. Thank you again.